Hey there everybody, my name is John or jdent02 on the Blender and Renderman forums and then also I go by that on GitHub. So uh, what I'm doing here is part one of a series that's meant to give a bit of an overview into the Renderman for Blender Exporter. Uh, it's come a long way since its introduction in May of 2015 and for a new user it can be a little bit intimidating especially if you're not really that familiar with Renderman as a whole because it operates fairly similar to Cycles but it's just different enough to maybe throw you off a little if uh, you're kind of wandering into it blind. Um, before I start, I want to point out that I am using RenderMan 20.10 and then 0.9 of the exporter. Um, for those of you that are on 21, uh, RenderMan 21, there is a beta version of an exporter for that, but it's, uh, it's still feature incomplete and still kind of buggy at this point, so I would uh, I'd stick to the tried and established uh, 20.10 and 0.9 for now. Uh, for those of you that actually have never used it before, I'm actually going to kind of start from the very beginning and show you how to go about getting both RenderMan itself and the exporter. So basically we're starting kind of fresh. Um, as you can see, I'm on a Linux desk drill right now. I primarily use Windows, but I find that for RenderMan, Linux is a lot more stable, so I'd uh, encourage to use it if you can. So basically all I've got right now is Blender 2.77a. So if we go over to RenderMan's site, and you go to the Get Render Man. You see this little button over here for non-commercial. Uh, that is probably the easiest way to get it if you're not a paying uh, customer of Render Man. Um, a lot of us aren't, admittedly, in the Blender community because it's mostly hobbyists. But anyway, so you click on non-commercial, and you do a download and install. And I'm just going to kind of skip over that because there's really no need to do that. And once you get it. see a folder like this and I'm going to kind of cheat here because I don't know the actual commands so oops messed up a little bit there hmm well Okay, that's not working quite as well as I'd hoped. Aha, third time's a charm. So we'll just do this. Like I said it's kind of cheating, but there's no there's no shame in that. So yeah, once you open it, you'll see this. And you go to next and you enter your form ID, in this case that, and next. And here is the real kicker. You want to click OK on this and click Show All. Reason being is that to use any of the interactive rendering features, you need to actually install RenderMan Studio for Maya because it has an image viewer that is used for the interactive rendering. Now with 21, you won't have to do that. For right now, you're still kind of stuck with it. So um, best advice I have is to go with... Uh, 2010 for Maya 2016. For some reason the 2016.5 it, it gives people some problems and they have some weird crashes and it doesn't really it doesn't really matter for what we're doing so we can just go with the 2016 and be happy. So anyway I won't download that because I've already got it and there's really no point wasting time with that. So now we have RenderMan installed on our system. So to get the exporter pop over here to GitHub and the page of B. Savory. Uh, Brian uh, Savory is actually the main developer for this. He works for Pixar, so he kind of got a little bit of a, a nice advantage there that somebody who knows RenderMan intimately is working on this. And when you get in here, you'll notice that there are three branches of the exporter. And this kind of goes to what I was talking about. There's the master, which is kind of the closest thing to an official release that there is and then there is the development 21 this is what's currently being worked on now and then there's an old development branch that was used prior to the latest master uh, this branch is pretty much dead as far as anybody's concerned so it's it's still there but I'd stay away from it so we're just gonna play with the master and if we go back into that wait a minute because for some reason my internet is ungodly slow this evening anyway do the clone or download and that will give us a copy of the exporter 
And to get that to actually work, basically all you do is you go into Blender, 2.77 scripts, add-ons, and paste it in there. It's right there. So now we've got RenderMan and we've got Blender itself. It's time to actually go into Blender and see what kind of trouble we can get into with this. We'll launch it here. And we're greeted with our good old default scene. And as always, you need to go and actually enable RenderMan itself. And there it is right there. 20 integration. And that's it. Uh, you'll notice that the preferences here have slightly changed for the 0.09 version. It's a little bit more intuitive now, a little bit easier to find um, the actual RenderMan installations. And the nice thing is, if you have multiple versions, you can actually select them here. Um, as you can see, I'm only running with 20.10, so I don't have any other options. And then for RenderMan location, you can choose from installed, or you can actually use environment variables, or you can actually even do it manually if you're really a masochist. Uh, I don't really mess with that because I've found that I, I tend to screw things up more than help it when I do that. <clears throat> so I avoid it. Anyway, once you have the add-on enabled, and you drop it down, and you'll notice right away that these two icons pop up here, and these are actually pretty valuable and nice, nice to have them freely available. Uh, you'll notice a number of the panels have changed over here, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it right now. i uh, kind of dive a little bit more in depth on some further, further tutorials for this, but you'll notice that the render panel has slightly changed, and that there is display options and also render to options. This is where you'll notice your first major change. Uh, we'll kind of get into talking what IT is later. <coughs> Excuse me. A couple of options here, the denoiser option. There is an external rendering panel. If you enable it, you get to actually a whole wealth of options that'll just pop up there. And this is actually some pretty advanced stuff that um, many users probably won't use. It's more there for kind of the power guys that want to get into um, offline rendering and all that kind of stuff. Um, a main sampling panel where you can kind of set some of the qualities. There's actually some, some nice presets in here, but you can also set your own and uh, actually change all of the integrator settings for the number of different rendering machines that RenderMan is capable of using. Once again, that's for another tutorial, not this one. Uh, motion blur controls, preview rendering, and then the dense advanced panel that's just got all kinds of good stuff in it. And so that's the main rendering panel. And you pop over to the scene panel, you'll notice that this has actually changed a decent amount from what Blender shows. Um, the render layer system here works a little bit different than Blender default. Um, you actually uh, can't select different combinations of scenes. Basically it's, it's all the same. So if you enable a scene here, you'll notice it also uh, follows suit down here. <coughs> But what you can do is you can actually set up multiple render layers that will actually use different combinations of rendering passes. And uh, once again, that's kind of a, a topic for a different, a different tutorial because it's actually a, a fairly complex system, especially if you click that little button and then you kind of start messing around with all the options that can potentially pop up down here. As you see, it, uh, it, complex, it gets complex much quicker. If we pop over to the scene, uh, you won't notice a huge amount of difference until you start getting down into here. Uh, this is actually a new panel that came out with 0.9, and it's actually a lot of potential to this panel. Um, what it basically allows you to do is assign lights and objects to uh, associated groups. And then you can use those groups for one of a um, number of several different things. One of the things you can actually do is you can control what lights affect what objects. And so that kind of gives you a bit of a cheat. It's not exactly uh, physically correct, but like if you wanted to have a light illuminating one object and not another, this would be the way that you did it. Once again, it kind of sounded like a broken record, but that's for a different tutorial. Over in the world panel, there's not a whole lot going on. There's actually uh, mostly, mostly nothing going on right now unless you decided to uh, work with the RenderMan world settings, which is basically a shortcut for adding a light to the sky. Um, you can do it this way or you can actually manually create one. Um, once again, <laughs> I can only say it so many times, not really going to go into that right now. So, The object panel, you'll notice a number of uh, options have been added 
to deal with RenderMan specific attributes, uh, specifically you know, where the geometry is coming from. You've got a couple of different options here, a uh, number of different options here. Archiving, shading visibility, um, overrides, all, all different kinds of stuff that you can do with particular objects. Uh, there are a few uh, mesh variables. In this case, you can kind of see them down here. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. And then the material setting um, is more or less the same as what you'll see in Cycles. It is a node-based setup, and everything starts off with kind of a default white, uh, really boring shader. And once you do that, that's when you start to get into the fun stuff of adding different materials. And you can see these materials are selectable from here and exactly how they're used and what a number of the different parameters are, you know, once again, as always, will be covered by a different tutorial. And that's pretty much it. If you, if you do add particles, you'll notice there are some RenderMan specific settings. Um, that can also be something that's covered in a different tutorial. And actually, from the sounds of it, this tutorial series is probably actually going to grow to be pretty big. So uh, I'm going to strap in for the long haul on this one. And aside from that, there's nothing really specific on the physics panel that's specific to RenderMan, so don't really need to mention that. But um, the big one is IPR, and this is kind of what I was referring to with uh, having to install Maya, is you have to do that to get access to the program that is used for interactive rendering. And that's actually a pretty cool feature, so we'll just kind of uh, mess with some stuff here. Turn that into an area light so it looks a little bit better. And then all we need to do is click on Start IPR. We wait a little bit, and there we go. This is our first RenderMan image. You know, nothing, nothing too fancy. It's just a cube sitting in the darkness. But the IPR session is actually still currently rendering. So if actually, if we grab the camera and say, move it over here, we can notice that our image changed and it actually automatically updated. So this is actually a pretty cool feature. It's a lot like Cycles interactive mode except um, this one's actually a lot closer to the final render quality I found. So it's actually a little bit nicer to use. But um, anyway, that's kind of a little preview of things to come. So that's pretty much it. Just kind of, like I said, just kind of an overview on how to get both RenderMan and the add-on and then what some of the additional panes and panels that you'll find and what kind of things they cover in there. And like I said, in future ones will actually go into details on what all these doohickeys and controls actually do. And then also maybe a little preview of uh, the 21 editions that are coming along. Maybe you can uh, squeeze that in kind of at the end of the thing. So hopefully you stick with it. I think uh, if I do my job right here, you'll come away with a pretty good understanding of how to use this integrator and also um, why, it's, why it's a nice update and why it's a nice alternative that uh, can really open some doors for Blender. So I'll see you at part two.